Good afternoon, class. I'm going to be talking about exam two. We're going to go to review. Um, the first thing I want you to notice is that the high score was 96%, um, and the average score was 73%. That's too low for an exam like this. Um, I am not going to curve it at this time, um, but you will see a um, curve of the entire class grade later in the semester, and we'll talk about how that works as we move forward. The, also, the standard deviation was 3.7, um, so that's two letter grades of standard deviation in both directions. That's not really what I expected. Um, and the average time was an hour and 33 minutes. I saw a lot of low scores with about 60 to 70 minutes, which means you had a lot of time to sort of fix it. Um, you had a study guide, you had your notes, you had the lectures, you know, um, make sure you're taking as all the time that you have available. Um, but also I realized that this exam was very difficult. Um, and so I'm going to go over some of the questions and maybe explain some of that as we move forward. So the first question was about R2P and the, I want to make this very clear. I'm using R2P as an example. I wasn't expecting you to know responsibility to protect. I was telling you what it was and then I was asking you to take from that and explain what that did to the existing theories, right? The three theories and what that meant for critical theory specifically. A lot of you lost points because you only answered part of the question, right? Even if I have a two part question like this, you need to make sure that you're answering the full question. What's the, what's the, what question am I asking? Make sure you answer the question that I'm asking and make sure that you answer all of the questions that I'm asking. So the first part is what existing paradigm does R2P alter or reject, right? And the very easy one is realism, right? Realism says that the state is a unitary and primary actor. And so you, a lot of you got that, right? That realism says only the state matters, only the state makes decisions. And here you have other aspects of this coming into play. Now, I didn't need you to look up that this was part of the UN. It's actually not the UN that originally introduces it, but that's a lot of background information that's very useful to you. What I needed you to know is if that state sovereignty's definition is changing, that's realism being altered or being rejected because the state is no longer a primary actor, right? There's something else going on. You could have also said liberalism, right? Because there's this idea of self-determination that if you wanted to have a vote where you didn't protect your whole populace, you could use liberalism. It's a little harder to make that argument for liberalism, but it's not impossible. Um, constructivism would not be the best idea for this, right? You could have used that argument, but constructivism takes into account the social constructs that exist. And the social construct of RTP re really is tied to that constructivist theory, right? The agency of the state, right? The states can make the system how they want, and you're making this where sovereignty includes an obligation to the population. The part about critical theory is really about identifying omitted variables. And I wanted you to talk about something other than just saying it's omitted variables, right? Explain some aspect of it. And this is very broad, but you need to give me more than what's in the study guide. And this is true for all the answers moving forward. You want to make sure that you are answering the question and you're doing more than just giving me a summary of the terms and restating the question. You want to show some critical thought. You want to make an argument. I never require you to use the same answer, response, right? You can use your own brain and your thought process to come to a correct answer. Now let's go to question two. Yeah, my computer is not great, so. So here when we're talking about, that's not question two. When we're talking about the sex and gender interchangeability problem. There was a lot of confusion. The first is, Feminism doesn't define this this way. Now, some of you mentioned the sort of idea of gender of grammar and how everything is sort of for someone, and that's a good argument to make. But what matters here is that science in general talks about sex and gender, right? Sex being biological. And the most obvious example I can give you, right, is that a doctor cares about your sex and doesn't care about your gender, a medical doctor. Right? A medical doctor is trying to see if you should see a gynecologist, if you should get a mammogram, if you should have a a pregnancy test, right? These are sex characteristics. Only females can get pregnant. And I want to make sure this is very clear. I am not trying to propagate any sort of trans-exclusionary ideas. 
what I am saying is that you cannot change your sex, right? And this is not an argument that is controversial, right? You cannot get a sex change. And doctors wouldn't call that surgery or whatever practice or behavior that we're talking about. They would call it a gender reassignment surgery, or they would try a, a gender restoration surgery, but they would not call it a sex change. A sex change is actually an older dated term um, that's, that's usually highly stigmatized. So if you are female, your DNA is female, right? Your biology is female beyond sort of just your reproductive organs. And so when we're talking about this, that's what matters to them, right? That we need these definitions because it matters, especially for a radical feminist, that we're talking about issues that affect women first. And I apologize females first, right? The females are affected by these issues, specifically reproductive issues, right? These are female issues. When it comes to gender, right, these are, are larger issues. Some of you really hit this on the head, right? Radical Feminist says it's about sex because we have to deal with the issues that they are dealing with, right? The issues of, right, birth control or the issues of being raped because they are women are using rape as a weapon, so we'll talk about in the next section. The other part, if we're talking about informal versus formal economy, is treating women, right? A transgender person can be a woman. A transgender person, if they were born male, I shouldn't say born, if they are biologically male, they can't become biologically female, right? Science is not at that point. So if you're a liberal feminist and you're like, making an argument that, okay, we need to care about these people who are in the informal economy, and a transgender person's in the informal economy and identifies as a woman, then the little feminists care a little bit less, but radical feminists care the most about it. Now, a couple of you made very clear responses that were not part of what I was saying, and I get that society has sort of created this idea that feminists, radical feminists are more extreme, or they hate men, or a lot of this stuff has come up. None of that's what we covered, and that's not the theory, right? Remember that this is a international relations course, and I was giving you critical theory. Feminist critical theory is not the same as a feminist person, right? So a feminist has an activist behavior. They have a lot of opinions. The theories we have are not opinion-based, right? These are arguments they're making based on evidence. And if you've watched the lecture, the most recent lecture, um, you can make an evidence-based argument and take a side. So just make sure that you're getting these differences clear, right? Yes, the, the different types of feminism treat them differently, but radical feminists don't reject males. They don't hate males. Um, they want to make clear this difference between being female and being a woman, but for very practical reasons, right? A lot of it has to do with reproductive health. Um, and then the last part, right, what would IR scholars miss? Don't just tell me that they would miss something. What would they miss, right? Are they going to miss that women are still being violated after a war, right? That's, some of you, that's a, 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 an example I gave that some of you referenced, right? Or is it that if you're in a society that involves in a ritual, right, that you don't have any conflict, you're at peace, but the international community says you need to stop this practice of female genital mutilation. So these are real examples. And when, you, when you're doing this, I want you to really be explain what's happening. And if you don't have an actual example, that's fine, but explain it in your own words, what you think is happening. Don't just give me sort of definitions and give me a restatement of the question. Give me some critical thought that I can grade you on. Okay, the next part, um, I, I tried to be a lot more lenient on because I was asking you about sort of Western perceptions. And I think this is one of those things, it's very hard to know if you're Western and you don't have any sort of interaction with people from outside the West, or if you're sort of insulated to this, right, that you may not notice some of the biases that exist. And they can be anything that's a Western bias. Um, but some of you use things that aren't really Western bias. Um, rational choice is not a Western bias, right? And I didn't really mean for you to pick like among the theories um, and say that part of the theory, right? What about what's the bias in it, right? I wanted you to find some Western bias. And I think that most of you just don't have enough background in another part of the world. And that's my fault, right? We should have caught this. So I'm going to, this question in particular is going to have some modification when it comes to like your final grade. Um, and then, right, 
figuring out how to answer each part of the question. What is the bias in the Western perception that's not being acknowledged? Okay, now I've answered what is the bias. The next part is how do I show that this would give it some falsehood, right? What would be wrong about, it? not just that, that it would be wrong, what would be wrong about it? What would it over or under predict? And then the last part is find something, don't just say like, oh, there's an omitted variable. Give me more than an omitted variable. Give me more than the definition and the answer, right? I need to, to sh show some critical thought. And then the last part, uh, most of you did very well on this, right? There were very few um, people who didn't give a good response about this ontology. I think we're really starting to get this idea of ontology, which will be very useful later, that we won't have to fight with this. We can just say, here's the ontology, here's the theory behind it, and here's the thing that's happening. And as we go through conflict, the international security and IPE, right, a lot of that will really come together. So I've gone over the test. If you have anything that you think was helpful or you think that it was unclear or that I said differently during the exam and or during the lectures, and now I'm saying during the exam, right? come and talk to me and explain, not don't come and talk to me, but message me, communicate with me about how you think this could have been better. How can we improve this process since we're not having any face-to-face -face meetings, right? How can I get you to respond in such a way that shows deep thought about material that we have covered? So just think about that process um, and then keep on top of your material and I hope to hear from you soon.